Good day, Flight Simmers. Today we're going to do a flight with the Daha TBM 930. So we're going to fly today from Liverpool in Nova Scotia, Charlie Yankee Alpha Uniform to Yarmouth, Charlie Yankee Quebec, India, and it's about a 31 minute flight. And you can see from our flight plan here that we are doing a approach, an RNAV 24Y runway approach, and you can see our it. Our waypoints there, Liverpool, Tanvi, Penla, Mebsa, and Yarmouth, where we arrive, and it's an IFR, Low Altitude Airways flight. So I created the flight plan with a little nav map. So if we go to a little nav map, you can see uh, free software you can download off the internet, very easy to use, and uh, all these little uh, windows here you can activate them to uh, sort of uh, customize how you want this to look but there's a flight plan I created very simple to do and there's lots of YouTube videos on how to use this um, under tools uh, there is a setting to connect to Microsoft Flight Sim so what I've done is I've uh, exported this flight plan here and uh, that window's getting in the way there. So right here you can export it as a Microsoft Flight Sim and just save it on your computer and then when you start up Microsoft Flight Sim you just go to load save and you just load the uh, software and you will find that um, it will um, be inside the aircraft like we see right here. So there it is. So that got imported. So now all I have to do is hit fly and I'll show you something again with little nav map why it's so helpful once we get up and running here. So here we are at Liverpool and there's the uh, looks like the weather's uh, pretty nice here today. This is real time real weather. So there's our aircraft of beauty and nicely rendered by Microsoft Flight Sim. This runway isn't very long but it's uh, long enough for this aircraft to take off. So what I'm going to do is uh, set the aircraft up for the flight and we'll take a look at the checklist. If you're not familiar with this aircraft, I'm just going to close down the ATC window for now. So these checks have already been done. So with this aircraft on Microsoft Flight Sim comes a pretty extensive set of checklists that you can use right up to shutdown once you've landed. So that's very helpful uh, to learn where all the various um, dials and switches are on this aircraft. So I'm going to go to this one and to show you this has already been completed but I can reset the page and let's just go through um, where some of these things are when you're in the before lineup uh, stage of your flight. So let's just go highlight that one and then I'll click evaluation Park brake. and it'll take you to On. these things. Landing lights. So On. you need those on. Navigation lights. Click on. on. Yeah, well we Strobe need them. lights. They're already on. on. Ignition auto or on. Yeah. As required. It's on auto. AUX boost PMP. That needs to be auto. auto. Fuel SEL. Got auto. it. Auto. Device check. System. As, As required. required. Check. Pito L slash Pito. Yeah. On. HTR. As required. On. Inert SEP. Inert SEP is on. on. Trims. Trims, uh, that's kind of looked after uh, in your startup. Um, you can auto complete that if you're not really familiar with how to set the trim. You can just auto complete. Flaps. And the flaps Two. are set to TO, takeoff. Auto or max diff. Altimeter setting. 
So the altimeter, I'm just going to press B on the keyboard, and it'll set the set altimeter. Because we're using real time, Alt real south. weather, um, you have to set the altimeter. So the altitude, um, there's the switch for the altitude, and I'm going to set it to 6,000, which is our cruising altitude for this uh, low flight IFR, low altitude. Let's just get up to 6,000 here. And there we go. So now you can just tick that item. Set. XPDR squad. Now that's already done, and, and it's set using this um, touch screen controller screen right here. So if you go into that, you'll be able to get to that. And uh, I'm not going to go into that right now. You can play around with that, but that's automatically done for you. So tick item. Set. All right, so now for takeoff, this is what we need to do. We need to have our props into the green sector. We need to release the brakes. Our torque goes to 100%. Our rotation speed. Now, I will go back down to this um, touchscreen controller screen. And I think it's control 4 will get us there, or even control uh, 3. But uh, right here, we, we can see there's something called speed bugs. That's because we're on the primary flight display. Button has been activated. So we can hit speed bugs and we can turn them on. And now I'm just going to go home again. And if I go back up to the primary flight display, you can see they're showing up here. So this is helpful for our uh, stall speed, our climb speed, um, our approach speed, our rotation speed. So um, it'll give you an idea. Now you will get a stall warning with this aircraft if you're, you are going too slow. So here on our primary flight display we have a speed indicator. It's going to tell us uh, our indicated airspeed. And then we have an altitude uh, indicator. So on that we're going to see um, the altitude we have set and the altitude we actually are. Right now, 320 uh, feet above sea level. That's because we set the barometric pressure. So here we see um, our, our first waypoint that we're headed to. And right now, I have wind data turned on. Now, these are all soft keys, and you can do different things like play around with your map where you want it, the type of map. You can move it over to here, um, traffic, etc. Now here's where you set your active nav. So if I click on here, you can see it's picked up the localizer. Here is localizer two, if you have that programmed into nav. And here it's flight management system. So I'm just gonna close this down for a second and go back to this screen right here, which is your touch screen controller. And uh, if I want to uh, set the nav frequency, let, if you were doing an ILS, which we are not, but I will show you how to get to that. If you hit nav comm, you can see here's your comm settings to set up your comm. And there's your transponder already entered for you. And if you want to send out an identification thing, you can also click on that. And here's your uh, radios. So here's your NAV1 frequency if you were doing a NAV1. So you can change your comms and you can change your NAV1 and NAV2 frequencies if you're doing VOR or if you're doing an ILS approach and landing. So you would just click on that and, uh, and change it. So we're not going to have to do that, but that's how you do it. I think some of you are familiar with that. I'm going to go back and go back to the home screen. And, um, and I'll show you that that was how you could change this to your active nav. So, we'll go back here. And you see this source here? Uh, that was what I changed there. You can also do it from here. You can do some of the functions for your primary flight display from there. This is your multifunctional screen. So I'm just going to go up, take a look at that. So once again, Control-1 will give you uh, this view uh, right there. I'm just going to straighten that out a bit with my mouse. 
control 2 will give you your multifunctional display screen. So we're going to be watching this and we are going to be um, looking at our torque, our props, our NG, uh, and make sure that everything is looking fine. Right now we haven't uh, gone uh, full throttle for takeoff, so these are just in the proper positions. This is your um, inter-turbine temperature gauges. So that'll tell you, you don't want to get into the red, it get, uh, it'll overheat the internal turbines and can do some damage. So there's your oil pressure, your oil temperature, and here we see brake, and now inert set is on, and you saw that down below there, that right there. So I'm going to go back to here again. And inert sep is uh, sort of a, a separator that um, activates when you have that on. And if anything is ingested into the turbine on takeoff, it will deflect it away from the turbine blades. So, you know, like a bird or stones or any debris, chunks of rubber, anything it might ingest. Also, if you're flying in icing conditions and you turn on your de-ice system and chunks of ice are breaking off uh, they also could get ingested and um, and damage the turbines so that's when you'd have it on so for takeoff and landings mainly when you have that on and then once you get airborne and you're away from any issues you can um, you know turn it off because it will increase the internal uh, inter turbine uh, temperature gauges a bit by I think 10 degrees or something so you don't want that on when you're flying. Now I'm going to put the weather on here. And uh, if I do this screen and, and uh, go to weather, uh, if I go to multifunctional display, you can see there's weather, but that will change this screen. But if you want to change this split screen on this side, um, this is automatically on primary flight display. But if I turn it on to this, I can select weather from this one and it'll work on this screen here. Then I can do uh, weather and uh, WX radar. Let's do that. And then uh, weather selection. Um, so you have to turn the radar on. And then it's it says it's in standby right now. So I have to click that and, and say go to weather. And now it's activated. So if I have any rain or heavy thunderstorms etc it's going to show up on the radar here for us but right now you can see it's a clear day and we're not having any issues but I'll just show you how to turn that on so let's take a look at our flight plane so this was what was um, exported from little nav map and uh, imported into this aircraft so you can see everything looks good 6,000 feet is what we're headed for and then you, you can see we, we would want to be at that altitude. This has automatically been entered by Little Nav Maps flight plan. And this one actually is one that um, we didn't ask for. These ones we did. So 1,600 feet. This one, um, Microsoft Flight Sim um, programming automatically added that for our approach which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I'm just going to leave it. You could delete it if you didn't want it, but I'm just going to leave it in. So we're going to go back to little nav map for a second. I'm going to show you something before we take off. Okay, so this will keep our aircraft centered. There we are there. And this will allow our aircraft to show up in little nav map if it's highlighted. So I'm going to take this off for a second so I can zoom in here and show you that uh, here is um, the altitude needs to be at 1600 feet in order to pick up the RNAV approach. So if we're not at 1600 feet there, we're not going to be able to uh, catch. If we're too high or too low, we're going to miss the glide path. So that's critical, we're at that altitude. And right here, actually, at this waypoint, we're also at that altitude. Now here's the waypoint that was added to the flight plan. Um, so we're gonna actually deviate from this line 
little nav map created and we're going to fly to this waypoint and we should and turn and go in on a nice approach so this might be like a standard approach for arriving at this a star type of approach so you can see that we have it on the RNAV runway all right 24 two four so let's just close that window down and go back here and once again take a look at something else I can do ahead of time for preparation is set the vertical speed so I'm not going to use VNAV on this I'm going to use uh, vertical speed and I can set uh, if you scroll on this wheel up or down you'll be able to set so I'm scrolling to go up and I'll scroll it for a uh, thousand feet per minute so you can right now see this is ROL vertical speed is on a thousand feet per minute so there's our uh, heading now the heading bug is down here we're going to line it up just by right clicking on the heading knob heading control knob and you can see when you do that it automatically lines you up with the nose of your aircraft whatever direction your nose is pointed so you can do that anytime during the flight all right our angle of attack there and I think I mentioned these soft keys down here you can play with those you want to learn more same thing here there's some soft keys here for changing things but that's about what we need to know for doing this flight so hopefully everything will go well so I'm using a joystick uh, Logitech Extreme 3D Pro a lot of buttons programmed into my joystick and you can do that in your options settings so we're good to go and we looked at the checklist for um, takeoff and that's what we're going to do so um, let's uh, take a look at um, once we get after takeoff we're going to have to bring up our landing gear and flaps and, and take off that inert set. So I'm going to bring that up after we get off the ground. So we're ready to go. You can see the flaps are set and I have the heads up display turned on outside. So I can go outside the aircraft and enjoy the scenery and look at the aircraft, how it's doing from the outside, but still monitor all our instruments that are critical. So, I have to release the parking brake, and uh, that is done, um, let's see, the parking brake's underneath there, but um, you can press control, delete on your keyboard. Let me just uh, go here, um, control 3 or control 4, uh, there's a parking brake right there. So I'm going to press control. I can click on that, but I'm going to press control delete and you'll see. There we go. Okay, so control one and then let me get back to a decent view out that window. There we go. So we're all set to go here. So we should see our rotate speed come up here at 90. So when we hit 90, I'm just going to gently pull back right now, lift off, gentle climb. Now I'll go outside and I'll show you um, what it looks like. And I'm going to hit G on my keyboard, Gulf, G for Gulf, and here landing gear is coming up and now I'm just going to use my joystick to bring up the flaps. You could go inside the aircraft and do it with your mouse. So now what I need to do is go to this automatic flight control system, turn on the autopilot. The odd damper came on. Sometimes it doesn't. If it doesn't, turn it on or you'll get a warning. So you can see we've got nav turned on now and uh, the autopilot flight director are now controlling our flight. We've got a master warning here and it's probably because inter-turbine temperature gauge has got too high so that's just a nice reminder to turn this off. It'll help uh, with the temperature on those. 
So let's take a look at our checklist after. So, landing gear up, check, flaps up, check, torque looks okay. So information's right here. De-ice as required, inert sap as required. So let's just see uh, what flight level we're at here. Mm, right now, uh, we're approaching uh, 3,000 for our altitude, and we are tracking perfectly on this flight. So watch your speed, you know, this, this very powerful little aircraft, so just going to go outside. have a look at the aircraft and see how beautiful it's rendered by Microsoft Flight Sim. So, there's our exhaust, there's our air intake from the turbine. So that's where you might ingest something which could do some damage to the engine, so that's what I'm talking about. Uh, we've got two dots out here, uh, little instruments that uh, send uh, sensory data to the inside of the aircraft flight engine control system to uh, let us know what our speed is, our altitude, angle of attack, etc. Which well, it, uh, depends on the aircraft system. So there's the beautiful PVM930. Got the little uh, wing tips flared up. That helps uh, save fuel. It's a nice design feature that the King Air has as well. So this thing can really flip along. You can see we're easily just uh, moving along at 200 knots and our true airspeed is 232 knots. That's an indicated airspeed. There's our altitude, which we are rapidly approaching. Trim is automatically controlled by the autopilot. And what that first pass is your vertical speed. So, nice day. I um, don't know if we're going to see any weather here. Let's have a look inside. Yeah, so at our altitude, like uh, straight out of us, we don't have any issues here. So these little bars will tell you if there's light rain, or moderate to heavy. So we've got clouds, but no rain. So a nice day for a flight. And this is Nova Scotia, beautiful. Many, many lakes in Nova Scotia. And if you want to know the name of that lake, you just go to the map map. There's some data about the aircraft right there, but not. So that's the nice thing about the that one. See, it's telling you about the aircraft. Um, it's telling you the title. The airline is NASAIR, which I believe. There's our flight number, which I've given. There's our transponder code. There's the type of aircraft. The registration is GC930. I just set that myself. Here's your model. Wingspan, so you know it's really uh, a great little program. So you can turn that on and off using that. Now this will send you your aircraft. So there we are. And if you want to look at your elevation, there you go. So you can zoom in and zoom out, and you can also drag it. So you can see we need to be at 1600 feet here. There's our top of the sand. And we still have to be at 1600 feet here as well. Altitude. And, and it even gives sort of this speed here. 180 knots. So it looks like we're descending uh, to 1600 feet. 
here with us, which we won't be at the pickup and why not. So, you want to know what the name of these lakes? There are six lakes. Silver Lake, East Bay, so really nice. Uh, there's the municipality of Shelburne County here and Queenstown. So on that side of my trip, like really interesting. Also other aircraft. VAL 199, a Delta flight, and uh, there's the altitude. It's flying over us at 55,000, So looks like we're just about uh, halfway there. So we are, like they said, this waypoint was added into our flight plan. We took a look at that earlier. So that's really where the aircraft's flying. And then it's going to turn and come around. Hopefully everything goes well. check everything and do the checklist again. Now I'm going to have to drag this down because uh, every time you go up here your toolbar will pop up and there's various things you can do with your toolbar. You can change your weather in f within the flight, you can go fast forward in time, you can check your fuel, reset your fuel gauges if you want. So there's our fuel gauges there cabin pressure yeah. and there's your electrical system information and you can see there's your flaps and your elevators and your rudder so let's take a look at uh, our climb so altitude is let's set check altimeter uh, so I'm going to set the altimeter again D uh, Bravo on the keyboard see it just changed important to do that uh, if you're doing real flight you are three, two miles northeast. Keep speed not above 210 knots. Expect RNAV Yankee runway 24 approach via Tandy transition. Cleared to Tandy. So we're cleared to Tandy. Keep speed not above 210 knots. Expect RNAV Yankee runway 24 approach via Tandy transition. Cleared to Tandy. Nasser 616. So cleared to Tandy. So autopilot uh, is on and working fine. But the altimeter we did, yeah, check. Fuel gauges, check. Uh, they look fine. And the ice as required, in it. inert, SEP as required. Now, I think we'll just put that on when we get closer to our approach. Our landing lights as required. So, I just left the landing lights on because uh, it makes you more visible if you're under 10,000 feet. So, pull that down, bring it over here, and uh, go back inside the aircraft for a second. Make sure everything looks good, which it does. So, there's our, uh, I've left the flight plan up, multifunctional display screen. And uh, you can see we're headed for that waypoint. And right here you can see, um, I'm just going to go primary flight After display for you. Okay, we got to go to 1600 Descend feet and maintain for 1, an altitude. Feet, Nasser, so there's our there's our distance, 13 nautical miles. So they want us to descend already. So that's because we're at 6,000 feet. So if I go Control uh, Three here, uh, I can set the altitude to 1600. Now you could have done that at any time after you reach 6,000 because um, it's not going to be down until you give it the command on the automatic flight control system button which is right here vertical speed down so I'm going to set it for a thousand feet per minute for descent you know it's uh, that should be good enough you gotta play around with it a bit right here see what it is. So um, I'm going to have to watch my airspeed here because uh, as you're descending of course you're going to pick up some airspeed. So, okay. I think we've got lots of time to get to that altitude but for cruising there's our checklist once again. Altimeter, check, 
B on your keyboard. Autopilot's working fine. Fuel gauges are good. D ice. Enter step as required. The landing lights off. Now I'm going to leave them on. I think that's a. I think you'd have the landing lights on for the landing. But uh, it's up to you. I don't think it's going to matter if you turn them on. Um, that's for cruising, like I said. Now, uh, for descent, um, I'm going to turn that intercept on now, like they suggested. And uh, altimeter, I'm going to check that again. Barometric pressure, yeah, it didn't change. Check, fuel, check, the ice system, check. So for our approach, this is what we're going to have to do. Once again, altimeter, fuel gauges, de-ice, intercept has to be on then, or it's definitely recommended. Uh, and then landing lights on again, so I left them on. So let's just see how we're doing here. For altitude, I'm going to have to uh, increase the descent, because I want to make sure we get down there in time. Good here coming into the RMF. Yeah, so I've increased them at the same time. So once again, I want to watch my airspeed and see it's going up there. Just because I'm descending. I'm going to so we need to get our airspeed down. We're going to be landing at around 90. Our approach, I believe, is 90 knots. But that'll show up on our airspeed indicator as we turn on those uh, speed belts. So we're getting down to pretty good. Yeah. Speed not above. So right here I can see I'm following my flight plan pretty good. Now it's turning. So we just picked up, the, uh, we're heading to the next waypoint, which is Penlo. So once we get to our altitude of 1600, it's going to slow down because we're not descending anymore. So that's where you got to watch you don't hit stall speed. So let's keep your speed up here. So I'm adjusting the throttle. Let's just go back inside for a second so you can see on our multifunctional display what's happening here. So everything's looking good. And we are at 1600, so we should pick up the glide path. And in order to do that, I'm going to have to turn on approach mode. So I'm going to check the barometric pressure again to keep us at 1600. So let's just see if it changes. It didn't change. Okay, so. Airspeed is, is, is not bad right there, you know. I'm not going to stall on this. Now let's do our checklist again. So, altimeter check, fuel gauges check, de-ice as required, not required. That's on, check. Landing lights are on, check. So now, short final. So we're going to have to put our landing gear down, their flaps, and they say autopilot disconnect. So you can do that anytime just before touchdown if you want to leave the autopilot. So once we make the turn here, I am going to uh, put on approach. Now you're not going to see localizer LOC and you're not going to switch it to that. Now that would be for an ILS. Of Charlie, Nasser 616. Charlie Yankee Quebec India traffic Nasser 61 is 611 miles northeast inbound Arnav Yankee runway 24. Charlie Yankee Quebec India traffic Nasser 616 is on final runway 24 to land. Okay, so I'm going to put down the landing gear and the flaps now, and you've got to watch your airspeed because once you do that, you're going to have some uh, drag created and it will slow the airplane. So I'm going to put down the landing gear. 
you should be in this uh, white zone to do it, more or less. So you don't damage the aircraft. So just press G on your keyboard, belt, T belt, and then your flaps. You can do that with your keyboard, or inside the aircraft with your mouse, or just using your joystick. So we got the flaps down, and now the aircraft is turning. So now I have to hit approach and see what happens. You saw right as soon as I did that, this magenta G came up. If that was an ILS approach, that would be in green. And then we have this in white, GP, glide path in white. And if that turns green, it means we've picked up the glide path. And we will start descending. If it doesn't, for some reason, because it can be temperamental if you don't hit that right on, um, you're just going to have to take it off autopilot and land it plane yourself. Uh, but you'll be close enough you'll be able to do it. But I'm watching my airspeed now because it's getting down a little bit there. So, so I need to be around 90 for approach, 85. Let me have a look and see what we got here. I'm going to get behind so you can see the aircraft. So this uh, little diamond here should start dropping, this magenta diamond. And when it gets to there is when we're going to pick it up, and I believe that should happen right here. And if it doesn't, then uh, this a little glitch. Check the barometric pressure again. So just continue to monitor your instruments here. Make sure everything is looking okay and there's no emergency type situations popping up. Watch your airspeed so you know I have to get it down. So you see right here that magenta diamond is just hit. So we should start descending. Yeah. So we've intercepted and it was right at that. Because we were at the correct altitude when we hit that waypoint, it was able to pick up the glide path. So that turned green. And your diamond's holding right there, which means we're holding the uh, probably a three degree. So now if you're not lined up perfect, um, there could be a little wind right now blowing us a little off course because you can see that uh, we are flying with our nose slightly in a westerly direction here there's the actual heading and that's to adjust for the wind so the autopilots and the flight director are automatically doing that and the approach mode is doing our vertical descent for us so we're lining up pretty good there so I'll just take you outside for a second so you can see what's going on here Now, depending on uh, if it's a real short runway, you can uh, put on extra flaps if you want. Uh, I don't think this checklist says full flaps here landing. Yeah, yeah, that would be full flaps. We'll put some more flaps down now. And we'll just watch our airspeed. We need to be around 85 to make our So, keep your airspeed up so you don't stall. Doing my best here with my uh, throttle. 
and you can see we're getting a bit of wind here. It's a little gusty. You can see it's really blowing us uh, off course. The autopilot is doing its best to keep us <laughs> lined up with that runway. So this would be a little tricky without the autopilot on. I just increase the speed a bit so we don't stall and I can cut it back when we get a little closer. Now I'm going to put reverse thrust on. Just hit the uh, reverse thrust button programmed into my keyboard. That should turn on the reverse thrust. And now I'm going to reduce my speed. So you see as we get a little bit closer, uh, it's easier for the autopilot to line us up. So I'm going to get the speed down and I'm going to take the autopilot off now and just pull up gently so we have a nice soft landing here. There we go. Take the outside so you can see what's going on here. Alright, so the reverse thrust should be on right now. Just let you see. So, okay. We got her off now, and I'm going to uh, bring up the flaps. So let me just uh, bring up this checklist for you here. So uh, runway clear. So taxi lights on, etc. So um, navigation lights off, strobe lights. So we'll go through that. But uh, what we need to do is uh, turn around, I think, and go back here. I'm going to try, and I might have to go on the grass a bit here. Okay, we're going to go back here and turn off because uh, we were past this uh, runway exit to taxi by the time we got the aircraft slowed down. Okay, so the flap should be full up. So I just brought the full up. And I'm going to get off here and I'm going to contact air traffic control and ask them if we can get a parking spot. But maybe, maybe here all we'll do is just get an indication where to go. Okay, so I'm going to have an accent here. I don't know what this guy's on. Maybe, maybe that's somebody to pick up our passengers on. Alright, so I'm going to put the parking brake on. Control delete on the keyboard. And let's just go inside and do this checklist here. Okay, so taxi lights. So I'm going to click that and go evaluation. Taxi lights. Okay, so let's put them on. On. Whoops. Navigation yeah. lights. Uh, off. Off. Strobe lights. Uh -huh. Off. Dice system. Yeah. As required. Uh -huh. Trims. Uh, reset to take off. Okay, so we'll put this auto. Reset to two. Flaps. Yeah. Up. Good. Now the other thing we're going to do here is. Uh, uh, this is probably for shutdown, but. We can also do it at any time. Uh, if you wanted to, you could uh, turn this off now in the P dots. But um, we will no doubt have to do that during shutdown. So there's our parking brake. I'm going to release that. Okay, so we've done that for now. So I'm going to close that down. And let's uh, let's taxi. See if we can get a um, ATC. Just a second here. Um, announce clear of runway. Charlie Yankee, Quebec, India. Traffic Nasser six one six is clear of the runway. Okay, so uh, we're just going to go park because. Um, 
in this particular scenario it's not allowing us to contact ground maybe because there is nobody here to talk to <laughs> it's just a small aircraft and maybe today they're so we're getting a little master there warning so we're just going to go up here and master caution I should say so uh, I don't have the parking brakes on so I'm not sure why. So there's the fueling station there, so. So I'm just gonna pull up here and park right here. Obviously this is a parking spot that you can take. And I'm just gonna pull up here and stop. Okay, I'm gonna put the parking brake on. So these you can turn off. So we had the P-tops turned off and everything, and uh, that is why we got that master caution, because I probably turned them off sooner than they wanted them off, and uh, everything's looking good. So now we are going to go through the checklist for shutting down the aircraft. So there's the one provided by Microsoft Flight Sim. It's pretty good, uh, you know, for... The basics I'm sure it's a little more extensive for the real world but this is just flight sim so we did the parking brakes and internal lights as required and shut those down they're overhead so just shutting down some overhead lights right now and Checking things off. Shutting off the bleed. And then the throttles. Um, you can auto complete this if you find it a little bit tricky to try and get that uh, throttle lever over into the feather or fuel shut off position. You have to hold your right mouse button down and grab it and pull it over. You know, right mouse button hold down and then pull and then pull again with your mouse in order to get it over to the right side. Auxiliary boost pump off. Generator off. Inert sap off. And like you said, if some of this stuff gets hung up, you can you can can force finish it auto complete. So that's the final thing. Pulling down on the bar there. That crash lever. So, thank you very much for joining me uh, we're going to take a look at opening the doors on this aircraft if you haven't done it before there's only a door on the captain side and the passenger side door behind the captain's door so the co-pilot there's no door on that side so you're going to have to go down here and uh, click on the open uh, door button to the right there of the handle and unlock it and then you should be able to push on that bar and get the door to open and a little set of stairs folds down for you here's a little exterior view
And just look over on the co-pilot side and you can see there's no lever or anything to open the door. So there's no door on that side. Now there is one for the passengers right there and let's go inside and see if we can get that door open. So I'm just using my uh, shift and arrow keys on the keyboard and then I'm going to use the alt key, hold that down and use the arrow keys to line this up and to move to the back. You can also um, use your mouse to scroll too. So it's a little tricky getting back here and line yourself up in a position where you can open and close this door. So there's the open lock button to push. And then you kind of have to play with that a bit to get it to so it's a little tricky getting that open uh, you have to be lined up pretty good the handle doesn't really cooperate very well with the mouse button doesn't seem to be a keyboard command to do it so there you go there's a look at the outside and a little set of steps folds down as well and I don't think you can uh, click on that handle and get it to open from the outside unless anyone's been able to manage to do that That button doesn't seem to be operable, like you push that button uh, to close the door, but I don't think that's uh, programmed in. So, so. so there you go, I flicked the handle and it uh, closed the door. So it's a little tricky uh, getting it closed. The other one at the front you close the same way but uh, it automatically closed itself when I went to the back so not an issue. Just going to lock it now. There we go. That should be locked. Yep. So like I said that little red button open button open or lock or close the door on the right of the door is not functioning. That one right there. Thank you for watching. And uh, give us a thumbs up or subscribe if you enjoyed it. And hope you got something out of watching the video. And I'll catch you next time, Flight Simmers.